stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Agajanian Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping here at the Hollywood Museum in the fabulous old Max Factor building. It's historic. And our guests are songwriter Mike Landy and actress Penny Fuller. Singer, songwriter, producer Mike Landy was born and raised in Boston, graduated from Needham High and NYU. He spent time in Brooklyn, and here you are, Mike. Why mm -hmm. did you come back to L.A.? Well, not back to L.A. It's my first time ever being here. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I came here a little bit on a whim in February, just signed my first lease for the month of October, and I'm here. I mean, the reason why I told all my friends when I first left was because... You know, I'm a recording artist. The entertainment industry is here. But I think the real reason was the weather. The weather. Look honestly. at you. I know. It's yeah, great. It's pretty outside. beautiful here. Um, do you come from a musical background? A little bit. My parents, my dad was musical. You know, he sang in chorus. But the I think a lot, most of the music came from my mom's side. We, a long line of piano players oh. in Germany before oh, really? World Landy. War II. Yeah. Yeah. Do you play? Do you play? Uh, piano? Yes, not any, like any them. other instrument. Sure, yeah, I play a little bit of everything. <coughs> and when you write, do you use one of those instruments? I use all of them. Yeah. Different you do things, like what? Times. Like, I mean, a song might start with a piano line, guitar, drum beat, melody. I sort of just let it come and you, as it comes. And you, you were a drummer. Yeah. Where did you drum? I played drums in different bands <clears throat> in Brooklyn over the past two years. Ah. Self-taught. Wasn't very good technically, <laughs> but I think as far as like being playing to the music, I was good because I couldn't really do too much beside just playing music. Is it like timing? Music. Yeah, just also like you know most bands they don't want a lot from the drummer. They want you know to hold the beat and keep the room going, and too many drummers just want to show off. And I, I was just I can't say. show off, so I just you know. <laughs> but so you were a good drummer for a band. I was good in that way. And yeah. what what bands did you front? I, I didn't front any bands. I mean, or did you play with, right? Yeah. The, the main one that I played drums for was Hey Baby for maybe like six, seven months before they kicked me out. And what kind of music? Hey Baby called themselves, I believe, sludge rock. Oh. Very like What's heavy, that? slow <laughs> beats, you know, really kind of like slow, kind of sludgy. I didn't totally understand it at first, but over time it kind and of And then made that, more sense so that me. drumming was great for that, because that was. <laughs> it was simple, yeah, good simple beats, and it was yeah. fun. When you were at uh, New York University, did you study music? No. Well, then where did you study all of this? Um, <coughs> I mean, I started playing. My parents forced me to take piano lessons when I was in second grade, and I didn't really care about it until I started playing guitar in sixth grade. Um. And I think that because I always kept music away from. Uh, education beside that I ended up liking it the most like I was you know I did visual art in high school and writing in college but it always music was the least academic for me so I liked it and what were you writing were you writing poetry music or? short stories oh, you uh, were. screenplays yeah did you use any of that in your compositions oh, sure yeah I mean to me it's like you know writing a piece is writing a piece and whether it's you know short story long story I don't think I write, wrote much poetry but oh, a the, painting a or a you know little short film or song it's all similar I said you were born and raised in Boston you were really in Needham Needham Massachusetts yeah which is just outside of Boston but I I think I was there they have a museum of bad art in you know Needham? About that? I think so that sounds way too cool for Needham oh you think it's too cool it was yeah. pretty weird it was in the basement of a movie theater and it was almost like art from thrift shops it was really, really bad art I mean, there's one movie theater in Needham when I was growing up there that was closed the entire time. So maybe there was something it in, could in the be, basement there. Yeah, yeah. That's that, what that, the, would, that would shock me. I mean, Needham, when I was growing up, was a dry town. I think you had to be 21 and over to buy cigarettes, too. Oh, it was Not, really controlled. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. But maybe that's what made you want to get out and go to oh, Brooklyn, it's, it's, which was pretty open. It's definitely what made me want to get out. Yeah. yeah. The sh this show, 
mm -hmm. is on the air in uh, Watertown, oh, really? Arlington, and Belmont. <laughs> You're bringing me back to playing travel soccer. Are those, those all places. your... Yeah, all those, those towns. Those, I haven't heard those names in so long. But they, they surround where you were. Uh -huh. They were close to where you were. Yeah. So you talked about writing, uh, writing, and then where does the, the lyrics come from? Where did the lyrics come from? What's your inspiration? Different things, different times. I mean, lyrics in some ways can be the hardest part just because... I try to write like the songs almost like fictional short stories. So like as opposed to being through oh, my point of view, it's more like about you know a character or just an idea. And I mean, I'm I'm from a very literary family, so I'm kind of hard on myself with that. They feel the least natural for the most part. But when it's there, it's like when the lyrics are really there, it just feels. What about amazing. the music? Do you write the music too? I write all of it. Yeah. Oh, you write it all, mm -hmm. and then you produce it too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So I sort of do it all at once. So, like, you know, it's the production, the writing, it's all kind of built oh, up at oh, one time together. Oh, you do, you do it all. Okay, yeah. so we're, the one thing um, that we have now that you're talking about is Happy Lives, right? Mm -hmm. And you're doing tracks for that. Mm -hmm. Where did that, what is Happy Lives? That sounds pretty upbeat. Um, <laughs> but I don't think it is. <laughs> it's, uh, I would say it's all of the above, ideally. It can be heavy, it can be upbeat. It's, I want a wide spectrum. So talk about the tracks. Are they long? Are they short? Short, short, yeah. Like what is short? Short between two and four minutes. Oh. We just released the newest one, Give Up With, is probably two and a half minutes long. Tell us what that, Give Up With. Tell us about that. Give Up With is a song that is, a, it's sort of a duet between two young idiots <laughs> who want to be with each other and just sort of go through a range of young, intense emotions, but it's also lighthearted. It's supposed to be lighthearted. And then what kind of music is it? Describe I, the music, because you talked about dance pop, you talked about heavy metal, you talked about what, sludge. Sludge, sure, yeah. <laughs> I haven't done much sludge myself. I mean, when people ask me to describe my music, my default is booty shaking music, just because like at the end of the day, I want people to dance, uh -huh. you know, whether it's heavy or emotional or sad or... And, good... and how active is booty music? It could be slow, too, couldn't it? It could be slow, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, sometimes it's hip-hop, sometimes it's dance. Give Up With is sort of like, uh, the drumming is kind of punk-based. I would say it's kind of like indie rock. Oh, so... Like, like, like modern, produced indie rock. And you came out of punk, though, right? I punk was and pop? Punk. Yes, a lot of punk when I was a kid. So you played... When I was in Needham, being angsty. When you were in Needham? Yeah. It's a good place to, you know, Did they accept hate the it? establishment. <laughs> of course not. They accepted it. I wouldn't have been it anymore. So you left. So ultimately, you do produce all of it. Mm -hmm. You write. You write the music. Then where does it go? What happens to it? Well, when I'm when I'm finally done with it, it we put it out on SoundCloud. Different periodicals cover it, and then we start performing the the songs. And it's, oh, you perform. Where do you perform them? Uh, the last place we played was El Cid. And uh, those are all Los Angeles mm -hmm. area. Yeah. And, and uh, do other bands play there? Is it all the same kind of music, like your kind of music? Um, no. When El Cid, the other two bands were more rock-based. I mean, we, we touch as many genres as we can, so... Um, and how many are in that group that you're talking about? Happy Lives? Yeah. Happy Lives is two right now. So it's myself singing and playing the electronics, and then we have a drummer named Aponte. You're not drum, drumming anymore. No, I'm not drumming for that. He's, yeah. he's a special drummer. He can do things that I can't do. <laughs> Has he taught you anything? Uh, he's taught me wrists, loose wrists. Wrist. He's got amazing wrists, yeah. The, the thing is you were riding already in Brooklyn, which is mm -hmm. totally different from here. Has your, has your mindset changed for doing this music? Um, I mean, the songs that I'm working on now, I started off, I started in Brooklyn, so I'm still kind oh, of did. wrapping up some of those. Um, but I feel like I've been in like a sunny state of mind for a little over a year and a half now, which is part of the reason why I came here. Um, oh, in your own mind. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just sort of like, kind of like shedding some of that And of course angst. that influences everything you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are, are you, do you do anything else? Do you take any classes? When you're in here? School? Any, no, any. Music, dance? No, no. I mean, I learn from friends who dance because I need to become a better dancer from my shows. Um, but no, I, I hate school. I'm not going to school. <laughs> no more <ever>. school. So, <laughs> so 
when happy, happy Lives is finished, is that finished now? No, no, no. Happy Lives is that's my project that I like my you're, ongoing. That's your project. So yeah. how, where is it going from now on then? Well, it just sort of ticked up in seriousness with coming here. We have four songs so far. The first two were released over the course of like a year and a half. Oh, well, what were those songs? Uh, the first one was Marry Me, uh -huh. which is like a hip-hop <laughs> track. The second one's called Wanna Go Dance, which is sort of like lo-fi dance So EDM we're still track. in the dance uh, thing yeah, movement, right? But then the one we released in May is called Sick Love, which is like a slow R&B type thing. And then Give Up With, which released two or three days ago. Uh, so is, we're right on rock. track. We're yeah. right on, we're, now we're right sort of, up we're there. we're churning okay. them out and we're looking for, you know, we're looking for people to meet, people we're, who want to get involved and do more with us. And how do they find you though? They find this internet, shows. Find you on the shows. Yeah. Mike Landy. Mm -hmm. So we have you here in LA. What's next on your agenda, Mike? More shows, more releases. I think the next song that's coming out is going to be called Baby. And where will they play that? They'll, it's everywhere. It's, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud, yeah. The last one that we released got on KCRW as well, so we're hoping to keep in touch with them. Okay, baby. We got baby. it going, right? What was that inspiration? Oh, baby was a girl probably oh. who <laughs> just was a little bit out of my league. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> That's yeah. a good way to put it. Trying to put a positive spin on Let's that. Let's keep it positive. Well, mm -hmm. thank you for so much for coming. Thank you for having me. And thanks for watching that part of the show. Don't go away. We'll be right back with actress Penny Fuller. Hi, I'm Joan Agajanian Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping here at the Hollywood Museum in the historic Max Factor building, and our guest today is an Emmy Award winner, two-time nominee for a Tony, North Carolina-born, a Northwestern University graduate, actress, singer, dancer, Penny Fuller, and when I say dancer, many years ago I was in Tanya Lachine's class with you. Yes, exactly. Isn't that amazing to think about? She was great, oh, wasn't she? She was. She was a <laughs> Russian ballerina. Uh, it's teaching class in Hollywood in a sweatshirt and tights. <laughs> right. <laughs> and yelling at us. Yes. And never moving out of her seat. Never, never. Just pounding that cane. Uh, One. <laughs> we had a great class, though, didn't we? We did, indeed. and we, we, you were working then. Yes, I working. was living in Los Angeles. I was raising my daughter, and I was doing a lot of television and a lot of the LA theater. So let's start at the beginning. Was there show business in your family? No, oh, not officially. My grandmother used to put on shows on the farm in the winters and everybody would tap dance. My, Ruthie, my Aunt Ruthie would tap dance. My mother was a classical pianist. My grandmother would play ragtime. Oh, so there was a little bit of... Well, showing off, I guess. A, a little bit of talent? <laughs> a little there was bit some of talent. talent. Yes. But you just mentioned your daughter. Did she follow in your footsteps? Not at all. She is saving the world, or trying to. Mm. Uh, she works for Richard Blum, uh, Diane Feinstein's husband, and oh, in right. um, San Francisco. developing new nation, uh, de helping <laughs> new developing <nations>. new nations, <laughs> developing countries, uh, oh, helping yeah. them develop countries. He's stuff. very active in that. That's a, th yes. those are really great programs. I actually. know. We can't save the world with a ballet bar. No, they no. have to save. <laughs> no, but we can make them happy. So, what was your big break on Broadway? I w re went on to replace the understudy, or the, it was a standby. You know the difference between a standby and an understudy? You have to tell me. The understudy comes every day? Uh-huh. And is usually in the show, you know, in the oh, chorus. Oh, somewhere or in the chorus. Yeah, or something. And the standby is a little bit higher class, and you don't have to come. Now you do. They make you come to the theater. But in those oh, days, it was above. You could call on. Yeah, you could call in and say, "Is she all right? Okay. Well, I'm going to be over at Jones uh, taping a TV show or something." And call me if she <clears throat> right. needs me. So I went oh. on after four rehearsals. I went on for Elizabeth Ashley in Barefoot in the Park. Oh, that was so great too. Yes. That play wasn't and it? it was and she wonderful. was great. She was fabulous. And when she left, she took a leave of absence to do a movie where she met George Pappard, and that was that. The rest was history, and that voice and then, of hers. Right, and and then I took over for her, and we are still besties after all these years. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So once you were there, did it continue? Did, did Broadway just keep opening the doors? Were they open all the time? No. 
Because once you have your foot in, you think that, yeah. I mean, we see people on Broadway now, they leave a show to go do another show to go do another show. Well, it didn't happen that way with me. Uh, I was lucky enough to be in Barefoot for almost two years, but it nearly oh. killed me. A long run. There's a wonderful story about um, Eva Legallian when she was young um, interviewing Eleonora Duza. And she was interviewing her, the great Italian actress, actress. and she said, um, no, oh, I must go, I have a show. And she and Duza said, what are you playing tonight? And she said, oh, we're doing the, the seagull. We do it every night. And she said, oh, my dear, that will kill your soul to do really? the same pl play every night. Oh, That's to, what to do said. the same play. And after a while, it's really hard. <clears throat> it's hard. So now I can't, I can't, I mean, I was in a play, the last play I did, we did it three times, and I... By the end of it, I thought, I can't do it anymore. You mean after three times? I mean, three different productions. Oh, I'm three sorry. different productions. But yeah. I mean, you stayed in it for yes. like weeks at yes. a time? Yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's really, I don't think I could do it more than nine months. Were you, when you were uh, going to be in Barefoot in the Park, uh, say after Barefoot in the Park, mm -hmm. were you continuing to, to audition? And oh, yeah. Were you working in different things? Yes. What I did basically next was I did a play that was directed by George Abbott, the great George oh, Abbott, right. down in uh, Florida. But what I then started to do was to begin to learn to sing. And I studied with this wonderful teacher, David Craig, who was Nancy Walker's husband. Remember Nancy Walker? Oh, yes, Walker? of course. Yes. Oh, I didn't know he was a coach. Yeah, and I took his class, and as a result of that, I became the standby in Cabaret, oh, the musical Cabaret. I fantastic. Mean. And that time I went on after four performances. And you sang? I mean, four rehearsals. Did, what role did you play? Sally Bowles. Wow. Yeah. You had that hat? I had everything. <laughs> And um, that was after four rehearsals I went on in that. And Barefoot, I'd been over the third act twice. Oh. I have been thrown on in the most un. You mean just brought in at, uh -huh. at intermission? Uh, well, no. Or in I between mean, acts? No, I was brought on, uh, no, but I mean, I rehearsed it twice. Yeah, oh, oh, you don't have two yes, rehearsals. Yes, two rehearsals. And in Cabaret, I'd had four rehearsals. And here you were, you're nominated for a lot of roles on Broadway. And mm -hmm. we're talking about Cabaret now. Mm -hmm. Um, who else, what other shows were you nominated in? Well, I was not, I was not nominated for Cabaret. I was nominated for Applause, ah, okay. which is the... With Lauren McCall? With Lauren McCall, which is a musical of, about all about Eve. And as I came in today, I saw the picture of Betty Davis and the, and the costume... For All About Eve. For all know, about Eve. Isn't this museum great? It's fantastic. Did you feel like you were at home? I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, they change the exhibits yeah. all the time. I know. It's um, wonderful. It was not here when I left. No, it was probably it was still, still the Max, Max Factory. Factory. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. Well, Donan da Donnell Dadigan is the owner, oh, director of the museum, and she keeps it moving like oh, this it's all fabulous. the time. So I'm glad you're here. Me too. And and what are the, what were what were the applause was one of them. Okay, well, applause was my big break, because and this was the kind of thing where um, I had been learning, been studying oh, sing. singing, right. and uh, applause. Um, as I I mentioned to somebody today, Milton Katselis was a teacher oh, that I studied I with. I talked about Milton today too. Oh, you did? How yes, because funny. he was at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. Yes, and I was one of his students. Oh, he was fabulous. Oh, he wasn't was he? fabulous, and he always said, "You cannot say I'm a singing actress. You have to stamp your passport as a singer." Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's what he said. So, so you weren't an actress. I would no. I, I mean, you weren't an actress, according to him. You had to be a singer. No, 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 no. What, what I wasn't was a singing actress. Oh, I, I was see. either an actress or a singer. Oh, right. Okay, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't back out of it by saying I was a singing actress. Oh, oh, but that's what was... they needed with applause, was a real, you know, it was a very dramatic part. I, so that, I remember when you, the curtain opened and they walked down on yeah, stage. Oh, yeah. What an opening. Yeah. So, Emmys for TV. That was for... The Elephant Man. I did the national tour of The Elephant Man uh, with Philip Anglum and and the wonderful director who just died about two weeks ago, Jack Hofsis. Oh, he was from San Diego, wasn't he? Did no. he do work in San Diego? Not I, that I know of. I think he used to open some, like, 
before it got to Broadway, oh, maybe, he would come in. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know that part. He was great, wasn't oh, he? Oh, he was wonderful. Oh, you were lucky. Yeah. I've, oh, I've and been, George Abbott, too? And George Abbott, yes. And Mike Nichols. Oh, I know. And uh, let's see. Oh, millions. With of, the greats. Yeah. With the greats. Very lucky. So the, uh, Elephant Man was the Emmy. Uh-huh. They, the, uh, NBC, ABC, ABC took it and did it... Um, for television, for they had a thing called American Theater Television, or something American like Theater that. Wing, I think it was. Something was like, it something no, like that? No, no, I don't know. Was what it was. that? Okay. Anyway, whatever it was, and they did the play on for television, and I got the Emmy oh, for it. Oh, that's great! Well, oh. you were nominated many times for Emmys. I was. I know. And those You've days, had such a great amazing. career. <laughs> I mean, you know, I keep I forget it all, you know, and then somebody like you will remind me, and I think, aren't I fortunate? But you were such a you are such a great working actress. You Thank never you. stop working. And I think it's like you just make yourself get it, go into any role and take it over. Well, you know, talking about Milton again, Milton Kitsellis, he would make us, he would say, write down your, what did he call it, your career concept. Well, what does that mean? Well, just write down what you would like and say the kind of roles that you'd like to play. Oh. And say, don't say a, a, a leading lady, say a leading lady like Betty Davis, or a oh. Betty Davis in blah, blah, blah. And be very specific. And he said, as you're writing it down, your brain is telling you more than you think you know. Oh. And I wrote mine down, because I was a good student, I did my <laughs> thing, you know. And one day I was in New York doing a play while I was still living here, but I went back, and I thought, where is that thing I wrote for Milton? And I took it out, and it said, I want to be like a British actress in America. I don't want to be categorized as any one thing. I want to keep doing film, theater, musical. And you did it all. And I did it. And you continued to do it. And you've been, as I said, a working actress, but you've been promoting in L.A., the L.A. scene. You've worked at The Taper and mm. Antaeus mm -hmm. and The Matrix and The Amundsen. And I think being a part of some of those companies that we were talking about helps promote and helps other actors, too, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. I the, hope. <laughs> the new project that we want to talk about is 13 Things About Ed Carpolitti. Is that right? Oh, Carpolati. Okay. Yes. Tell yes. us what that is. It's well, a musical? It is a musical. It is a one person musical. Uh -huh. Well, that's a little bit of a squeeze because uh, the pianist is also is in it, but he's not real. He's in my mind, but he's there on the stage. On the playing, stage. Playing. And where is it? At the what Broad. Theater? At the Broad. Oh, the the Edie, the little Oh, I love Broad. it. It's a yeah. black box. Yes, a black box. It's yeah. fabulous. Yeah. Oh, so people sit all around you, right? Yeah. Or did well, you change it? We're going to have, we can't have it all around because the people on the other side of the piano wouldn't be able to right, see, so but it would probably be three quarters. Three quarters. I'm clanging. Great. Is that yeah, okay? You're clanging. It's okay. So tell us about the music. Well, this was a play called Three Viewings written by a man named Jeffrey Hatcher, mm -hmm. and I was still living here. And they called me to go back to New York and do this play. Oh. So I did it, and I always loved it. It was three monologues, and mine was the third monologue. And then I met this man named Barry Kleinbord, who was a cabaret director, and he said, you should do cabarets. Another, another aspect. <laughs> yes, and so I started working with him, and then we got, after doing about eight or nine cabarets, we said, oh, I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> and I said, I want you to read read this play. Oh, you had it. You remembered it. And he read it, and I said, will you make a musical out of it? And, my gosh, he did it. You know, the interesting thing is it's a one-person play, mm -hmm. but there's a huge cast. Yes, that's true. That's absolutely true. And it's true. all on the phone, it's right? It's all me. It's all me, yes. Are, are, all the phone calls are you, too? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking, and then I, I'm the person who's talking to me. Oh, you are? So what about the wacky. direct what about the director? Well the director is Barry Kleinbord. Oh. The composer is Barry Kleinbord. Oh. The lyricist is Barry Kleinbord and he adapted it from Jeffrey Hatcher's play. And Carpolati is who my is husband. He? He's my he he is my recently departed husband. And what do you remember? You remember good things or bad things? Well I remember only good things, but I find <laughs> out that my husband has, that I adored, and we adored each other, has left me in over $300, $3 million debt. 
Oh, he's left you in debt. And I knew nothing about it. And who are these people calling you? Well, they're the people telling me how much money I owe them. Oh, and so I do you answer the phone every time? I do, time? because I didn't, or, you know, I answer the answering machine, actually. You answer the machine? Or I hear the machine, and it's, a, it's one of them calling, or they call me, and, or I call them back. Are you on the stage all the time? Or, I mean, all are you the all time. the time? All do the you time. Do any costume changes? Nope, nope. And what do you wear? I wear a lovely, lovely purple, uh, purple more eggplant suit. Uh, well, I don't have the jacket on, but I will as I leave. And a lovely, lovely pink blouse and very comfortable, pretty pink shoes. And do you stand, sit? Uh-huh, all of so, it. So you move, he moves you oh, around. Oh, yeah, I move around. And one production that we've done, we had a staircase, which I went half the way up of. But we don't. We won't have a staircase. So you've here. done this before. Where else have you we done it? We did it on uh, off Broadway in uh -huh. New York, uh -huh. and we did it at the um, Merrimack Rep in Lowell, Massachusetts. Oh. So we've had two different um, types of audiences. Yes. Really. Yes. Yes. Because your types, off Broadway is like very yeah. staunch. Uh, very staunch, and you know, hard to amuse. Right. A little bit like this. Exactly. Show me. Exactly. Show me. And they loved it, and then they went bananas up in, in Hartford. I mean, in uh, uh, Lowell. Lowell. In Massachusetts. Lowell. It was in Lowell. Yeah. Because they love everything. I don't know about that, but they love this. Well, they I'm so you. happy to not tell you that they love this. A couple of times, you know, they say in New York, you stand up if you get through the show. That everybody stands if you for nothing. But for nothing. I'm <laughs> but the, I would say four times, they rose in a whoop, like at a football game. And you can from feel this, it, I, can't I, you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's very interesting, the effect this play has Were on people. Were those stadium seating, regular theater kind of yep. venues? No, the first one was not. Because this is not that kind of thing. Yeah, that's the way our first one was. The, the second one, Lowell, is a lovely, and normal theater. Can you feel the audience when you're in this black box situation? Absolutely. I can feel if they hate me. I can feel if they like me. I like it better when they like me. Yeah, <laughs> and it, yeah, because you're going to react better, right? Yes, yes. So, are you living in LA now? No, I live in New York. And this will be at the Broad Theater mm -hmm. in January, and the name of it is Thirteen Things About Ed Carpalotti. And how long are you married to him? <laughs> Forty years. Oh, you were. So it was a long time, yeah. and you never knew any of these secrets. No, that's why it's such a stunner when she finds out about them. It's a well, stunner. I'm and stunned, too, to find <laughs> out what the problem was after yeah, 40 years. Yeah. And I think we should come and find out why. Yes. Right? Yes. Will we know? And, and no, we'll, yeah, you'll find we'll out find why, out. but there's a surprise at the end of that's, the play that I hope nobody ever spoils your, says, sees it before you do and spoils it. Cause I'm this, not going to say. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to say. But I'm going to thank you for being here. Well, I thank you. And I'm going to ask you to, to come, see you again. come to ballet class because yes. I still go in the morning. In January, when I get back, I will. Will you? Bye, you're Dolly, on, I you're will. On. Okay. Keep writing to J A Quinn, one J A Q U I N N one at AOL.com. See you next time.